everyone, Eric here, Nomadic Fanatic from Base Camp in Illinois. I've been a busy bee lately. I have tons to share with you because uh, my buddy Robert has shown up to the property here and we've just been getting stuff done. You'd be surprised what a little uh, Bud Light and motivation will do and I can't wait to share with you all these uh, neat projects going on. You can probably see Miranda parked here in a new spot in the backyard. I'm going to show you more of that here in just a second and what's going on. But there's Robert been helping me out. He's got his car dolly there. We got a new burn barrel here in the backyard for burning all our Amazon packages and whatnot. And Robert also trimmed some branches that were over on the side of our RVs over there. I'm going to show you everything here in just a second. We uh, had a load of firewood dropped off here because we've got to have those campfires and we got another load on the way. Plenty of firewood. Then uh, here in the front yard. So Robert's pickup truck is right here. You, you may remember though, that's where the RV used to have to be. So Miranda used to be all the way to the front of the house here and then her nose would come all the way to the end of the driveway right here. Well, I had a, a company come out and uh, lay some rock and level the rock. And now I have extended my driveway here so you can see where Robert's bus is. This is all new, this is my property, but now we have an actual driveway and behind Robert's bus is Miranda all the way to the back corner of the house back there, which is exactly what I wanted eventually. I don't know, it just happened so quickly. Uh, the company did have to add, extend the culvert here at the front of the yard in order to put the gravel there. So there's a 12 or 14 foot extension there uh, just to maintain water flow underneath my driveway. But, you know, when, when Robert's not here, there, there's gonna be, you're gonna be able to see the house a lot better and I'll always be able to have one RV friend stay here and <laughs> it's funny because Robert and I started talking about projects here and he's just kind of a go-getter handyman. He's like, well, why don't we just add in a couple RV hookups to the side of the house? Like, like it's no big deal or something. I'm like, yeah, that's what I wanted. Is it that easy? In one day, here, we'll walk back to the backyard. He's an electrician by trade, so, so don't worry. He knows what he's doing, but we got my breaker fuse box on the other side of the wall inside here. And so now, coming out from that, he added a 50 amp and 30 amp breaker, got all the wire needed, and ran the wire from there so that we have two new outlets on the side of the house. You can see Miranda plugged in here to 50 amp right there. Look at it, it's like, an, it's like my own little RV park here at base camp. Then a little bit farther down the line, there's a 30 amp. So Robert's bus is plugged in right there, but uh, anybody else, another RV friend can plug in, use an adapter. Uh, I will also point out, so the hot tub right now is plugged into a circuit inside the window. <laughs> and the reason for that, I mean, it could plug into the outlet on the front porch, but I got the Christmas light system. That won't be like that all year round, so the hot tub could plug into that or use an adapter and I could plug the hot tub right into here also when I don't have friends staying over. But it feels good to get some of these things done a little sooner than I had really thought it was going to... No way did I think we are going to get 50 amp and 30 amp RV hookups here at the house this soon. And it really makes me smile. I mean, you can see how far back my RV goes and just kind of opens up the whole driveway. And, you know, the contractor that, that's still working and doing house repairs to lay the rock is cool. And, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like things are working. Robert's up on the roof. You, you guys saw this bus last spring. He's added 3,000 watts of solar up onto his roof, and uh, he's, he's wiring those. I've got some new batteries and a charge controller, and maybe I'll show you an upgraded tour of his bus here later. He's going to be staying with me uh, right up until probably Christmas or so. We'll see, but, but you and I may leave in the RV also. Robert also wanted to uh, hook up the smart car uh, so that we can already flat tow the car, and it didn't take long to realize we had another problem with Blue Ox because we got the Roadmaster Falcon 2 tow bar over there, but when we ripped into the Blue Ox sent directly from Blue Ox Manufacturing for the smart car, we did our little inventory here and realized right away they shorted us this mounting bracket. So there's a passenger and a driver's side. They only gave us one. They are different parts. They have different part numbers. There's no way of even knowing which one they sent me and which one we need. Like, are these mirror copies of each other or are they backwards? Um, waiting to hear back from Blue Ox in a couple days here, find out how we can move forward, find out if it's even available or if they can rob it from another package. But uh, the, yeah, this, this system is gonna be really cool. 
the removable pins for the front of the car and everything. But that project has to be on hold. I'm going to box all this up in case it rains or snows. I mean, you can't win them all, right? <laughs> it's a little too good to be true. But it does look like we'll be able to put something together, make something work so that I can flat tow the car right off the property as we head south because it's getting too cold. It's getting too cold. <laughs> Got to get out of Illinois soon. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, I am going to show you my, I'm not going to call it finished, but I want to show you Nomadic Fanatic Game Room Arcade inside the house. Nothing's ever finished. There's always more projects and stuff, but uh, I, did get, I did get one of the screens fixed, and I'm happy with the presentation of it. So let's go check out the arcade room. All right, and as we walk in, you'll see the first piece here, a Route 66 claw machine. Sorry about the audio, guys. I'm still trying a couple different things. I know it's a problem, and it's something that I will have fixed by the end of my next video, okay? So, I'm going to first show you all of the different games that are here in my living room that extend into my kitchen, and then I'll go into a little more detail and talk about what's going to be happening, hopefully, in the future, okay? So, there's what she looks like. Of course, you guys saw my Miss Pac-Man in my last video. That was the one that I uh, showed you there. This is a completely restored. Usually, I will not be getting games like this that are in, you know, perfect condition, completely restored from 1981. But that is a nice piece. Uh, what you haven't seen since the last video is my collection of neon now that I, I have all over the place. Got the game room one up there. This is a 1984 Bud Light original. It's super bright. It looks a little washed out, actually. And, of course, I hinted at this Playboy, but, yeah. So we got the Route 66 claw machine, which I'm going to change out uh, the toys in here to make them more custom. And we're going to go through all these here in a minute. We got the 1978 Bally original Playboy pinball here. We've got Atari's Road Blasters racing game with a gas pedal. We've got Sammy Baron Moose Trophy Hunting. This is a two-player game. Again, I know you're seeing some weird lines and stuff going on, but it's just this camera doing something funky. Uh, it's a two-player game where you can shoot moose and bear. Bear with me on this, guys. I love this game, and I did not think that I was going to like a bowling game, Silver Strike 2009. But this game is super fun. This is your bowling ball. You rock it back, get your spin, and release it. We're going to play all these. I'm going to show you all the games. All of them have working coin ops in them. I just don't have keys for all of them yet, but I'm working on that. And then the mother load, 18 wheeler by Sega. This thing is monstrous. It was a tough choice because I wanted Fast and Furious, I wanted Cruising World or Cruising Exotica, but I can only have one sit down racing game in my tiny little house here. So I went with 18 wheeler, which is so much fun to drive. It's just like driving a big honking motorhome through here. I've added some accents like my belly bass singing fish and a few cup holders throughout here because you got to have beer holders for when friends come over and they say, well, I don't have any coins, Eric. I don't have any quarters. Well, you're in luck. i got a change machine. <laughs> you betcha. So you can put your dollar bill in there and get some quarters. And then this piece here is a beautiful 1932 original Mills Castlefront slot machine. Look at that, folks. Yes, you see that right. This is a 25-cent machine kept completely original from 1932. Well, 32 to 33. It's hard to tell which year it was exactly. Uh, but most of these got converted over to nickel or dime machines because of the economy, the, the Great Depression in that era, and 25 cents was actually more than minimum wage back then. So you don't find too many that still take quarters, and you can see the quarters up there. The purpose of this in the casinos was so that the attendants could come behind you and, and look and see what your last coins were that you're not putting in fakes or something like that. Uh, this machine also has the jackpot front right there, so you can win the uh, jackpot. And it's completely restored. One day I will open this guy up and show you the mechanics. The guy I got it from rebuilds these things. And it's just gorgeous, okay? So we'll be putting quarters in all these and, and trying them out, okay? Let's test out. Oh, wait, I got one more. Well, this one needs some work. But I'm, I'm still going to show you because I, I love, love, love these old school vending machines. Uh, this is a national brand. I believe this is from the 50s. Um, I don't I don't have a date written anywhere on this, but I believe it to be the, the 50s here. It's got the original paint on there. 
you know, and it could be cleaned up. I just, I don't want to work on it right now. I just want it to look good. You can see the old, uh, the cigarette labels in there that are still in there. You, you pull the tab. We need to do some, I need to find somebody who cuts glass and paints on glass because that needs to be replaced. And this used to be a mirror, but I want to put old Camel Smoking Joe old uh, banner in there, I believe. And I do have the keys. So we can also fix the ballast in here and light this up one day. I just think it's a cool piece and it fits really well right there. It's obviously not an arcade or anything, but it fits the whole theme in here. So, yeah. And before we get started, remember guys, I'm not a millionaire. I got all of these at a reasonable price and they all need a little bit of work, but I've got keys for this and that. Uh, that I don't have a key for, but it's open. This I do have a key for, so I can swap this out. This machine actually comes with a bill acceptor, so it's 50 cents for two plays, so we'll go ahead and put a dollar in there. Once it gets started, it plays the Route 66 theme, which I love. I put some $100 bills in there. They're actually fake prop money in there, but let's try to get Mickey. 66. Come on, Mickey. Oh, and, and you can go in here and fine tune the frequency and everything on three different levels to make it easier to win stuff. But I don't know, I kind of I like the difficulty set a little higher with the arms a little weaker. Let's get Mickey. Come on. Oh boy! Yes! We got him. There we go. And I love how it plays the Route 66 theme. It's such a cool piece and it totally represents me on the road. For the rest of my arcade games, they all do take quarters. I'm not the greatest at Miss Pac-Man, but I love it. This one has the speed up chip, by the way. I actually think the screen's working a little better this time, so that's good. I got the frame rate fixed. We'll wait here for somebody. Come on down. Uh-huh, I got you guys. Oh, I'm not going to get them all, though. Yeah, I'm not the greatest at this. But anyway, Miss Pac-Man in all its glory. And I love what that speed-up chip makes everything so much faster. So there's that. For some magical reason, Robert holds the high scores on everything except my bowling game. But here is that 1978 Bally Pinball. This was the first one. There are three different versions of the Playboy Pinball, and this is the very first one ever. I have played this in so many different arcades. It's completely family friendly, you know? It's not like that one that has cards that you can swap out and put different pictures in there. No, it's just a simple little gameplay. I'm gonna set the camera up and play a little bit here for you. And before I start, you know, I'm trying to pack as much into this small house as I can, so that's why I just simply moved the couch forward, because this could easily go behind, and you can just walk behind the couch to use it, so. I definitely feel like, woohoo! Ready? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I just love it. It's so, so old school, you know? <laughs> I'm going through a lot of quarters lately. There we go. And I need to replace a couple lights. That bunny light out there is out, and there's a few lights in here that need to be replaced. I got the bulbs, I just haven't done it yet. I do think I've got it pretty much level, or as close to level as I'm ever going to get it. Oh, I need one of those bumper things right there that stops it. It's a really fun game, and it's fun to play two-player. Like, Robert and I have been coming in. This is our favorite game to play, two-player. Uh, bo the bowling game has also been fun for two-player. Anyway, yeah, that is... Playboy Pinball, lots of fun to play. I'm gonna let it die. Oh, so sad. Oh. <laughs> Here is Atari's Road Blaster. I could not find even a non-working pole position, which is my favorite stand-up racing game, but Road Blasters was my second favorite game, and this screen did not work, so I did have to replace this screen with a used one, and you can see it's got a lot of burn-in in there, but uh, it'll work for now until I get a new one. So let's go ahead and play this one. Okay, so yeah, t-shirt giveaway. I don't think they're still doing that anymore. This game originally came so you could swap out the guts and put in a couple different games. 
So the Road Blasters didn't have an actual Road Blasters decal, but it does have a really bad Atari logo on this side that I'm hiding. Now, I ordered a new vinyl side for this that is completely Road Blasters themed because this is so open and you can see it so well. So I'll fix that next time I get back to base camp. Oh, this one also, some bulbs are out on the coin mech down here, but still works awesome. And this is such a fun game to play. So much fun. In case you're not familiar, you, you drive around and you got triggers down here to shoot the other cars. <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? It's a very fun game. Uh, and now we get, oh, that was turbo. I thought that was the blasters. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not focused today. But yeah, just, a, just as good as pole position. And that game's so rare. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna give up on that one. Yeah, pretty fun game to play. You can't kill those purple cars. You can get the orange ones and you can get the motorcycles. And you get the fuel cells, the green and red fuel cells for extended time. Okay, anyway, Road Blasters. Uh, I can also adjust all of the volume levels on the individual games, except, I mean, I can adjust it on, on the bowling game. I just, it resets every single time you turn off the power. And wait till the end, because I want to talk about power management also. So this trophy hunting game is actually really cool. It is a two-player game, okay? You gotta talk it back every single time. Oh, Hunter One Star. Colorado, Idaho, Maine, Montana, Utah, and Alaska. We'll go with Idaho here. I'm gonna stand back a little bit. So we're shooting bear. You get to select which uh, weapon you want to use. And you can't shoot the babies. You can only shoot the big bears. <laughs> it's just a game. Don't get triggered, guys. It's just for fun, okay? Oh. Uh, I think I got a little one. That shows you where you, you hit them on there. So that, that was a little bear, but yeah. Let's do one more here. See if I can... Where is he? Ooh, I got him. Gotcha! So yeah, that's a really fun two-player game. Yeah. All right, just turned off the overhead light to get rid of that glare because this screen's not very bright. I can I can adjust all that. Um, you can also change how much money it costs to uh, play, but uh, it takes four quarters to play this one. I think there's already quarters in this one. Oh, there is. Okay. So again, select your players. You can select classic bowling, single game. You, there's three different lanes you can play at. And then there's all the high scores. You can see Robert way down there, number seven. I got the six top high scores. So you start by moving your player around where you want to start, get all lined up, and then this will show you what kind of curve you want to do. I like to bring it back C and then three. So you go C, three, let her rip. Come on. Oh, okay. And then uh, you can line up. I don't like to put spin when I'm getting my spare, so I just line it up straight. I'm really careful, and Robert teases me, but I go super slow, and I'm not going to get it. It's just off a little bit. Uh, nope. Really fun game to play, though. Crisscross the American continent, towing 30 tons or more at a time behind them. <laughs> it's awesome. Backbreaker 1-9. Such a cool game. Let's go ahead and try 18-wheeler here. Um, it needs some repair on the bottom. I ordered a cam lock that goes in here because this is stuck open. At least it's stuck open and not closed, but I can just put my corners in and catch them. <laughs> catch them on the way out like that. 15 cents to go. Go ahead and start. You haven't played this one, it's so much fun. It's a lot you like Cruising World. Truck. You select your trucker, okay? Asphalt Cowboy. Asphalt Cowboy. And Lizard Tail is gonna be my rival. And then as you go through these states, you actually pick up different trailers on, on the back. So, go to Key West. All right, let's do it. $12,000 reward. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stupid fun game, I swear. I know it seems weird. Beer holder right here for later. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And you can change the view so you can see the whole trailer, but it takes up so much of the screen, you know. Uh, also, there's certain cars you can hit that'll give you a time bonus, but you're basically going against your rival. So it's a three gear. The first two are in low, and you're not supposed to crash into people because they dock you points. There's my rival right there. You just kind of roll through. <laughs> it looks just like driving a big rig, you know? Except when you blow the horn, the cars will actually move over for you. The rival won't, but 
the cars will. This guy. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to drive, actually. It, they made it really simple. He just destroys everything. I have no idea why. But you can't advance if you don't beat your rival. So you have to get in front of him. And see, there's up there. I'm going to hit this guy right there. Plus three. Yep, time bonus. All right. Slow her down. Take that curve. Ah. Anyway, really, really fun game. This is my my second favorite game of the collection. Your little motor home right there. Isn't that cool. And now we're on the beach. Oh yeah. Hang on. I gotta I gotta beat this guy. He's pissing me off. I'm gonna get him. Don't you ever try to pass. Well, you're in my way, dude. Oh, we're almost there. We gotta go. We gotta go. I'm not gonna make it. This is going to be really close. Faster, faster. I'm trying. I'm trying to block him in. Yes! There's a time bonus right there. Gotcha, lizard. <laughs> cool game. All right, and yes, lastly, this masterpiece, 1932-33 slot machine here. Uh, neither Robert or I have won the jackpot yet, but I think when I have friends over, as long as they're using their own quarters, I'm going to go ahead and let them keep whatever they win. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Quarter goes up there. And remember, this, every time I pull this, it's gonna advance those. Let's see if we can win anything here on camera. I usually don't, but you never know. Come on, jackpot, that ain't gonna work. It works really well, it's kinda loud because it's all mechanical and everything, but it's just amazingly built inside. Like I said, one day I will show you this. Very addictive, there we go, something just happened. What happened? I heard, maybe I didn't hear it, okay. Oh, it dropped what was stored in there. All right, I got two more quarters. Wow, this thing is not gonna pay me today. One more chance. Come on guys, I'm out of money. Oh, darn it. All right, and lastly here, I said I was going to talk about power management a little bit because you know, a lot of things plugged in. A lot of these have buttons on the bottom or behind the consoles that are really hard to get to. So uh, I, I, I put my head together here and uh, came up with an awesome solution. It's all right here. This is how I operate all of the power components in the living room. If you're not familiar with these, I guess you call them a, a, a smart outlet. And so Lowe's sells a three pack of these. Let me see if I can show you one. Yeah, there's one right there. So you get a three pack. This is Defiant brand. You get three of these for $20 and that includes the little remote here where you have on and off buttons for three different circuits in your house, which will turn on and turn off those power outlets, which have two outlets on each one. But you can also run an extension cord into one and plug in multiple things, which is what I've done on the other side. So yeah, Pac-Man and this side off. Uh, go over here to the Playboy pinball section, off. Last one over there is the trucker and bowling game, off. And just like that, look at that. I didn't have to reach or unplug or pull any switches at all. How cool was that? Still kind of a uh, chilly night out here, but it's been a while since I've had an actual campfire. Been burning a lot of cardboard boxes and whatnot, and we got a fire going. That's eh, a good looking fire, and it's getting warm. You see the coals burning under there. You made a good fire, Robert. Thanks, bud. Yeah, that's a good one. So we're gonna enjoy the campfire here and I'll get back to you in a couple days on that part we're waiting for. Have a good night, guys. See you in a few days. Bye-bye.